Good evening, it is the 8th of August 2023 and welcome to Camnet TV's main news broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Let's go straight to look at the stories making headlines this evening. Police arrest Socialist Party leader Fred Membe. NGOCC calls for an early referendum on the Bill of Rights. Government to roll out a countrywide monitoring system on the utilization of CDF. In international news, Senegalese embattled opposition leader Usman Sonko hospitalized. And in sports news, African teams butchered out of the World Cup after Morocco's loss to France. Do join me with the details shortly. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. And now the news in detail. Opposition Socialist Party President Fred Membe has been arrested by the police on charges of libel and is currently in custody at Lusaka's Woodlands Police Station. Allegations are that on 6th June 2023, Mr. Membe authored an article in which he allegedly defamed Deputy Inspector General of Police for Operations Milna Muyambango. Socialist Party Chairman for Legal Simon Muller confirmed that Mr. Membe has since been warned and cautioned in connection to matters involving security issues. We have the details in the following report. <laughs> Clad in white, yellow, and red labeled political regalia, opposition socialist party sympathizers in harmony trooped to Lusaka's Woodlands Police Station to show solidarity to their leader, Freddie Membe, this morning, Tuesday, 8th August 2023. Membe, who was initially summoned on Tuesday, 3rd August 2023, appeared before the police around 10.30 hours and was questioned for over two hours later, arrested for libel against Deputy Inspector General of Police for Operations Muna Muyambango, contrary to Section 1. 191 of the laws of Zambia. It is alleged that on Tuesday, 6th June 2023, the opposition socialist leader authored an article about a police officer who died out of depression after he was fired from the police service while being dragged into the police cell. Dr. Membe was confident that he would be out soon. Yes, you know, okay, gentlemen, we are being locked up. It's not the first time it has been done, and it won't be the last. But it has never taken anybody in here. And it won't take Dr. Membe's lawyer, Simon Mwila, confirmed his arrest and expressed displeasure that acquiring a police bond for his client was being politicized. In relation to an article that Comrade Fred Membe had uh, published in relation to a police officer that had died due to depression after he was fired, so on the 6th day of June, that's when that article was published. So he has been charged in relation to that, that he defamed uh, the deputy IG, Mr. Miyambango. We them the sureties, we have revealed them the sureties. Of course, it's politics as usual, so we are waiting for further guidance from the police who have said they need to do their job, but we will, we will have our client out. Meanwhile, Party Deputy General Secretary Antonio Mwanza says the UPND administration should focus on arresting the country's economic situation unlike opposition leaders. Given Comrade President Membe, this is a government of scared men. This is a government of people that have failed to provide economic solutions to the people. And they are using the state institutions to intimidate Zambians. That shall not work. We will be here to speak on behalf of the Zambian people. This government must concentrate on economic issues instead of arresting political opponents. This is intimidation and this should not be accepted. Zambia remains a democratic state and will continue to speak for the people of Zambia. Dr. Membe, who earlier expressed confidence of being released, will, however, spend a night in detention as police spokesperson Ray Hamonga 
confirms his arrest and police bond not being granted. Police have further administered a warrant and caution statement to Dr. Fred Membe on the alleged offense of communication of certain information contra section 4 subsection 3 of the State Security Act chapter 111 of the laws of Zambia. Brief facts of the matter are that Dr. Membe with others and known person did receive classified information that the chairpersonship of the Central Joint Operations Committee has changed, which information he posted on 21st July 2023 on the Facebook page called Fred Membe, an act that contravenes the State Security Act Chapter 111 of the Laws of Zambia. For now, Dr. Membe can only hope a police bond is granted to him tomorrow, failure to which he continues to brave the code of Lusaka cells. Nelson Zulu for Comnet News, Lusaka. In a related matter, Inspector General of Police Grafel Musamba has accused socialist leader Fred Mambe of planning a rebellion in the country through sentiments promoting the military juntas of West Africa. Mr. Musamba, however, says it is wishful thinking to reason that the emerging juntas in West Africa can be extended to Zambia. Speaking during a press briefing on Tuesday afternoon, the police IG says the Zambia Police Service will not allow such schemes to thrive in Zambia. He adds that the Zambia Police Service has an obligation to defend the constitution at any cost and will do what it takes to smash any rebellion being instigated by the Socialist Party. Afias Kaputula has more in this report. In the country which is being enjoyed by innocent citizens. The socialism is preaching about and the bringing of the bringing of military coups or let me just say the relevance of military coups from West Africa into this country. We are wondering if this is the philosophy of socialism. All these statements have been made time and again on our watch and the excesses can no longer be tolerated because now we know where he stands and what he's made of. As Zambia Police Service, we want to put it on the record that we will not allow such schemes which everyone else equally abhors. If he knows what is good for him, it's better he quits forthwith while he can. And the same applies to every citizen who may be in the process of being chaperoned for the same. Please walk away. Zambia is not for selfish individuals. In other news, the Non-Governmental Gender Organizations Coordinating Council, NGOCC, has called for an early referendum in order to allow the expanded Bill of Rights to be included in the Constitution. NGOCC Communications Advocacy and Networking Officer Whitney Mulobela says the expanded Bill of Rights will address, among other things, issues of inequality and discrimination, especially for women. He says most constitution review process has been hijacked by political interests which has contributed to the referendum process failing. He says the constitution review process must be devoid of any political interest and that this can be done through an early referendum before the general elections. The expanded Bill of Rights like yesterday so that we can defeat issues like inequality. Okay. With the expanded Bill of Rights, we will address issues of inequality. We will address issues around uh, issues of um, discrimination. Okay? And for the women's movement, this remains very, very, very key. 
So what we're saying is that we need to work together, the media, civil society, to advocate and get our government to ensure that we have an expanded bill of rights included. Now, I was emphasizing that this is a process that must be devoid of any political interests, okay? Because at every given point, the problem has been this process is around the constitutional making process. They've been hijacked by partisan interests. So we are calling for an early uh, national referendum that the government must facilitate this so that it has no political connotations. Zambians can go and vote in a national referendum without any political um, overtones in the process so that as many people as possible can vote and ensure that we have the expanded bill of rights uh, included in this process. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development says a monitoring system on the utilization of constituency development fund will soon be rolled out countrywide, which he says will expose illegalities. Mr. Piri says the monitoring and tracking system will automatically detect all the inefficiencies in the administration and utilization of CDF countrywide. He, however, acknowledged that the ministry has received reports that CDF grants are being misused by some beneficiaries in various parts of the country. The Constituency Development Fund, CDF, an initiative devised to uplift the standards of various communities countrywide, has been the talk that never misses submissions made by stakeholders from all walks of life increased from 25.7 million kwacha to 28.3 million kwacha to save the plight of communities from the acquisition of empowerment fund programs such as grants, loans among others. However, reports have emerged that some beneficiaries in part of the country are misusing the resources to the disadvantage of others. These reports have unsettled local government and rural development permanent secretary in charge of technical services Nicholas Piri, who says mechanisms to monitor the utilization of the funds are being put in place. Mr. Piri says the system will be ready in six months and will expose the inefficiencies and successes of the CDF application countrywide. Tightening, tightening up our CDF monitoring dashboard uh, this dashboard is going to, at a click of a button, it should be able to tell us on how much has been displaced countrywide, how much has been used, and also tracking the groups, how they are utilizing the CDF. And uh, this process now is being tested, and we are hoping that in the next six months or so, the whole dashboard will be functional, and then we'll be able to track each group per constituency, per district, per ward resources. In the due course, we are going to give a comprehensive report of where this grant has worked successfully and where it has you know, been met with challenges and of course the way forward in terms of tying the loopholes on the leakages of the grants to the groups. The Permanent Secretary has also watered down sentiments by stakeholders to have a special auditing mechanism for the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, saying the audit for CDF is being undertaken by the Auditor General's office and will soon be complete. The CDF is a public fund and it is subject to all the regulatory framework and auditing mechanisms that public fund is uh, you know, subject to. And so by saying that, the Auditor General, um, through Ministry of Finance, do audit local authorities. And obviously the utilization of the CDF is part of the funds, that, it's part of the, the, the things that they do to just check on how it is being used, whether it is used in line with the provisions of the, uh, the, the laws that regulate public expenditure. Now, Sanzulu, for Camnet News, Lusaka. The Small Scale Farmers for Development Agency, SAFADA, has urged government to adopt a, co a, a constant policy on the Farmer Input Support Program, FISIP. SAFADA Director Boyd Mombwe says the Minister of Agriculture has been going back and forth on the future of FISIP, which should not be the case. Mr. Mombwe has since urged government to avoid changing goalposts on the program, especially as the rainy season approaches. 
In a latest uh, statement, the Agriculture Minister Mdolo Piwi indicated that the FISIP program will not be phased out but instead be improved. Interest rates almost running as with CEC or even less. And with time, we want that to be more than the FISIP arrangement. Because Minister of Agriculture Ruben Piri has since abandoned this decision to phase out the farmer input support program. FISIP following mixed reactions from members of the public. In welcoming the decision, the Small Scale Farmers for Development Agency, Safada's aged government, to avoid shifting posts on the matter, given the importance of the program to small scale farmers. Safada Director Boyd Mogwe says despite challenges of FISIP, the program should be maintained and only improved as mentioned in the government's latest decision. You know, the drainment in the distribution process, uh, which uh, of course made government to rethink and uh, sort of uh, phasing out. But uh, uh, this time around, I think we, can, we cannot recommend this because we are going towards the rain season and uh, farmers are expecting to receive fertilizer. Now, if we start uh, discussing when planning uh, uh, how to phase out this program, it, it will affect our efforts, it will affect our plans to. Uh, uh, help farmers effectively. Mr. Mowe has since urged government to avoid contradicting statements on FISIP as it has potential to destabilize farmers as the rain season approaches. When the minister said uh, they're not going to phase out the, 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 the program, they're not going to phase out, but they're going to improve it. <laughs> you see, so there are these mixed, mixed uh, statements uh, and uh, uh, suggestions that are always uh, put on, on the public domain uh, is quite confusing. Meanwhile, Mr. Mowe has urged government to find a concrete mechanism to ensure that the price of fertilizer does not continue to escalate. Attempts to reform FISIP due to identified inefficiencies have been dragging with the implementation of the e-voucher, a more targeted approach of the program not completely rolled out in the country. In the 2023-24 season, government will therefore spend 7.1 billion kwacha with the e-voucher system to cost 1.5 billion kwacha, while the direct input supply will cost 5.6 billion kwacha. For Camnet News, Afia Skaptura, Lusaka. Junior engineers, technicians and scientists have been encouraged to explore the potential of their creativity and nature entrepreneurship skills. Speaking when he officially opened the 2023 Nat National Jets Fair in Lusaka today, Ministry of Education Permanent Secretary for Technical Services, Joel Kamoko, says innovation is key in unlocking the country's economic growth. The Jets Fair, which will run up to Friday, 11th August 2023, is themed promoting innovation, engineering and entrepreneurship, accelerating STEM growth and development. More in this report. Young innovators from across the 10 provinces of the country have gathered in Lusaka to showcase their creativity. The Jazz Fair, which will run up to Friday 11th July 2023, will see junior innovators showcase their projects. In opening the event, Minister of Education Permanent Secretary for Technical Services, Joe Kamoko, encouraged junior innovators to harness their creativity as it has potential to transform the country's economy. So you take Jazz seriously. You collaborate as society. You give meaning and purpose to those young people who never knew they had opened already a university gates by virtue of their innovations. I want to encourage the young innovators, our science teachers, to remember it's not enough to come here and mention big names like science and technology, National Science and Technology Council, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, the Zambia Air Force, and all the partners that we've partnered with, you should remember that you are the biggest partner because you are the basis upon which this innovation, technology, and indeed the promotion of education is going to inspire all of us. To you, the young participants, the young minds, the excited minds gathered here, I want to encourage you to value yourselves and embrace this opportunity and harness your creativity. 
and nurture your entrepreneurial spirit. I took some time to visit and talk to some exhibitors who at the time were still arranging their projects and say their innovations have been inspired by challenges facing the country. Many people in urban areas, they just believe that if we is for rich people, not for poor people. So I came up with this idea because I see in any shop need the fridge, good things, and in urban areas, they, maybe they kill meat or they do something. They will just maybe kill today, tomorrow, they, they throw it away. So I made the soil so it can, I can cook things or so that it can last for three, one week. Or My innovation could be used in that case. Instead of transferring the electricity back to the electricity company, the electricity could be stored at your house. If it's a community, you could all have solar panels and have this one central place where you could be storing all the electricity. And this could be used in all different places, whether it's in America, Europe, or even Africa. We could use this to develop our economy. As a country, Zambia, this idea could be sold to different countries. When the sun like, comes, like, it hits the aluminum pole, you should, you should put it in the car. It bounces and then it's the clear plastic and then it enters inside into the black ocean into the paper, which is sand. It starts getting hot and then the image is on the start to cook. Jet fairs foster critical thinking, problem solving and communication skills, nurturing a passion for STEM fields and inspiring the next generation of engineers, technologists and scientists. Vincent Piri for Kamne TV News in Lusaka. We now move to court news. Opposition Patriotic Front member Francis Muchemwa has asked the Lusaka Magistrate Court for more time to resolve issues with his lawyers pertaining to legal fees before the state can proceed with his alleged corruption-related case. Muchemwa, together with his co-accused, toward Magistrate Davis Chumbwili Tuesday morning that they were unable to proceed with trial due to the same reason. This is in a matter in which Mr. Muchemwa, who is popularly known as Commander 2, is first with charges relating to possessions of property worth over 12 million kwacha suspected of being proceeds of crime. He is jointly charged with two companies, Freytech Networks Zambia Limited and Altitude Properties Limited. Here are the details. Lusaka businessman Francis Muchema pleaded with the court Tuesday morning to resolve issues with his lawyers pertaining to legal fees before the state can proceed with his alleged corruption case. This morning, the Lusaka Magistrate Court could not proceed with trial because lawyers representing Mr. Muchema and two others were not before court. In this case, Mr. Muchema, who is popularly known as Commander 2, a member of the Opposition Patriotic Front, faces charges relating to possession of property worth over 12 million kwacha, suspected of being proceeds of crime. The accused told Chief Resident Magistrate Davis Chiwili that he has unresolved issues with his lawyers regarding legal fees, hence requires more time to resolve those issues. Magistrate Chiwili granted his application for an adjournment on the basis that the accused is entitled to legal representation, therefore, will give him three weeks' time to engage his lawyers before the next hearing date. The state accuses Mr. Mchema of possessing a house in Silverest area valued at 2.5 million kwacha, possession of apartments valued at 4.5 million kwacha in the same area, among other charges. He is jointly charged with two companies, Free Tech Network Zambia Limited and Attitude Properties Limited. In the previous court session, the court was moved for a scene visit in Silverest area where Anti-Corruption Commission Investigations Officer Claudia Chibiliti had informed the court that the properties in question among them a house were in a possession. The matter comes up on the 11th of September 2023. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. The Anti-Corruption Commission has told the Economic and Financial Crimes Court that it will make the necessary application at the next hearing following the nature of illnesses disclosed by one of the accused in a matter in which former Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Kennedy Malama and others are facing corruption charges. 
former Ministry of Health Director Dr. Francis Walia, prompted the court to adjourn the case after his defense counsel indicated that he was unwell and receiving treatment. In this matter, former Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Kennedy Malama is jointly charged with former Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary for Administration Kakuleberua Mulalelo and seven others for failing to stick to procurement guidelines in the purchasing of 50 ambulances. The Specialized Economic and Financial Crimes Court has adjourned until August 30, 2023. The alleged corruption-related case involving former Minister of Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Kenneth Malama and eight others. The adjournment Tuesday morning was prompted by the defense application through the lawyer of the third accused, who informed the court that the accused in question is not before court. The court heard that former Minister of Health Director Dr. Francis Wale is unwell and currently receiving treatment, hence the reason why he did not make his appearance. In the last court session, Lusaka Magistrate Stanford Ngowala recused himself from the case and sent it back for reallocation, prompting the matter to start once again, meaning that the accused are required to take a fresh plea. In this case, Dr. Malama is jointly charged with former Minister of Health Permanent Secretary for Administration Caroline Kakulivelwa and seven others for failing to stick to procurement guidelines in the purchasing of 50 ambulances. The nine are jointly charged with willful failure to comply with applicable law and procedure, contrary to Section 342B of the Anti-Corruption Commission Act No. 3 of 2012. The accused are alleged to have failed to comply with the law when they awarded a contract to Iveco South Africa Limited, the contract sum being over 13 million United States dollars for the supply and delivery of 50 ambulances without following laid down procedures as prescribed by the Procurement Act No. 12 of 2008, read together with public procurement regulations of 2011. They are also alleged to have failed to comply with the law when terminating contract number MOH slash ORD slash 004 slash 15 between the Ministry of Health and Savenda Management Services Limited for the supply and delivery of 50 basic life support ambulances, supply and delivery of major spare parts for the ambulances, and training of personnel without following the laid down procedure for the contract termination as prescribed by the Public Procurement Act No. 12 of 2008. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. This is the main news on Camnet TV. We now take a set of commercials. Do join me with the rest of the news shortly after this break. Don't go away. In our quest to save nations and develop Africa, Savenda is investing in the agriculture sector so as to produce supply for both local and international markets. Housing over 12,000 pullets that are nurtured and fed with our locally made stock feed that comes from our own locally grown maize and soya beans. All processed from our recently installed milling and mixing plant. Our over 95,000 layers have an output capacity of over 1,500 trays of fresh eggs per day that are carefully selected and packaged for all the leading stores and supermarkets nationwide. Our greenhouses are fitted with the latest irrigation system and the seedlings are nurtured to ensure only healthy plants reach the fields. With our deliberate planting schedule, we are better placed to supply constantly without interruption, thus reliable. Savenda Farms is also changing lives of its dedicated workforce drawn from the local community and beyond. So the next time you think fresh and green, think Savenda Farms. Nepolo, have you connected to the Wi-Fi on the bus? It's fast, it's amazing. I've just downloaded my books and I'm about to complete the series. It's nice to me. Ah uh, no, I'm actually watching a reality show. He's about to propose. Oh, so sweet. Make your trip seem short yet comfortable and safe when you use the UBZ luxurious fully air-conditioned coaches that come fitted with amazing onboard entertainment, passenger information services, coffee making facilities and fridge for your hot and cold beverages, free and interrupted Wi-Fi for your gadgets, phone charging facilities, comfortable seats that recline to offer extra resting posture, safety seat belts, adjustable reading lights for each traveling client and of course clean flushing toilets for your convenience. So travel in luxury and safety with UBZ luxurious coaches. UBZ 
will always take you there. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Get all the latest updates in court news only on Kamne TV. We take you and make you feel part of the court sessions through our in-depth coverage of the adjudication process. Get informed on those that have been arrested, delayed and denied the police bond or bail victims, persons taking plea, court adjournments, verdicts and those administration issues in the judiciary. Comnet TV is on channel 274 on DSTV, channel 25 on GoTV, and find us on channel 106 on Topstar. You can also follow and give us a like on our social media platforms. Comnet TV, not just another channel. Thank you so much for staying with us. We now continue with the rest of the news. The Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, has aged cross-border traders to utilize virus trade facilitation tools to reduce the cost of doing business. ZRA Commissioner General Dingani Banda says the authority has introduced pre-registration, e-payments and a platform that allows traders to build a low-risk profile. Mr. Banda explains that traders who consistently follow rules as they import and export good, and a low risk profile as a trade facilitation tool which reduces border time searches, hence lower the cost of doing business. Most importantly, I wish to take this opportunity to appeal to traders to utilize trade facilitation tools that are continuously being improved on by the government, Zambia Revenue Authority, and other stakeholders operating at the borders with the support of operating partners. Particularly, I appeal to the traders to make use of our pre-registration, pre-clearance, payment using e-payments, and to build a low risk profile with ZRA to avoid the goods being channeled to the red lane where they're physically inspected. These and many other interventions are aimed at making it easier for traders to conduct their business, thereby contributing to reducing the cost of doing business in the country. Wildlife and Environmental Conservation Society of Zambia has identified lime as a solution to environmentally unsustainable Chitamena system of agriculture. Speaking during a traditional leaders' dialogue, conveyed by Center for Environment Justice, Mafinga District Coordinator Gift Mwandila notes that there are a few chances that people will stop growing millet, Chitamena system, because of its cultural and economic value. Mr. Mwandila has since advised farmers to use lime to neutralize the soil as some crops like millet do not grow well in acidic soils. And speaking at the same function, Mafinga Council Chairperson Duncan Kaonga says the insights shared and the solutions proposed during the dialogue has reinforced the belief that stakeholders possess the capacity to create a more sustainable and harmonious future for the Mafinga district. We have been growing millets with the farmers um, in Insenjawad without uh, Shitemene. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually um, one of the few days that agriculture, uh, the Department of Agriculture held, was held at one of the lead farmers that uh, is growing millet without uh, Shitemene. So all they need is a bit of uh, lime to neutralize the soils because uh, millet doesn't do very well in acidic soils. So the the, the burning process 
neutralizes the acid in, in the soil. So, yeah, there are methods that are already underway uh, that could be replicated. As we draw the curtains on this momentous traditional leaders' dialogue on ending deforestation and providing alternative livelihoods in the Mafinga district, I stand before you with a profound sense of optimism and determination. This gathering has been a testament to our shared commitment to the well-being of our environment and the prosperity of our communities. Allow me to equally extend my heartfelt gratitude to the Center for Environment Justice for the relentless efforts in championing the Stop the Chop campaign and to our esteemed partners, the Department of State of the United States of America and the Zambian United States Alumni Association for their unwavering support. In a bid to reduce rampant cases of gender-based violence, GBV, Zambia Sugar has embarked on sensitizing communities in Mazabuka district on the negative effects associated with the vice. The development has come at a time when Zambia police released a report on the second quarter of 2023 in which a total of 9,988 cases of gender-based violence, GBV, were reported countrywide, which he says GBV cases increased by 31.61% compared to last year. Company Corporate Affairs Director Eugene Chungu notes that the exercise which aims at educating communities on the dangers of HIV and AIDS and GBV will culminate into the National Voluntary Counseling and Testing VCT Day on the 14th of August 2023. Zambia Sugar Medical Social Worker Muta Chonga spoke on behalf of the Corporate Affairs Director. And so we partnered so that we could enhance our program at the Zambia Sugar Estate so that our workers can get information about GBV issues so that they are aware what GBV is all about and also to address issues that happen within the communities within the workplace regarding GBV. So basically the presentation now being done is by YWCA and workers are participating in addressing these issues. Yeah, basically because one 14th August is a run-up to the National HIV uh, Counseling and Testing Day, uh, which was proclaimed by the public of Zambia. And also it is the time when uh, we, are, we, are, we are midway, the, we are ending the year for the for the for the company the financial is ending in August and September will begin another year. So basically it's the hype of activities and that's where we, we maximize in terms of the time that we have for the workers. So we feel that if workers go through this program then they'll be able to identify abuse in general in whichever way you look at it, either sexual abuse or just violence or even you know if they feel uncomfortable at either a workplace or in the community, they need to identify to say, ah, no, this is not normal, it's, it's, it's leading to abuse. Sometimes they can be psychologically abused. So we feel that if they do this program, they are going to, to be able to identify, is this issue an abuse issue, am I comfortable with it? Zambia Sugar Estate is one of the, um, one of the places where we receive uh, cases from. And so looking at um, how many cases we are receiving and we thought it was going to be more helpful if we can reach out on sensitization to the sugar estate. And um, that's why you see us championing a sensitization to our thinking this is going to help us head in the right direction. And this also can also sway in either ways. It can also mean that we may receive even more cases after this sensitization or receive less. So we can receive more cases in that people are sensitized and now they are open enough to report about these cases. Or um, people may not really, we may not really get a lot of cases in that um, people are sensitized and so they are doing away with those uh, uh, bad vices. Teaching us on GBV and how to prevent it here at work and in society. And I think my co-workers here, they've really benefited from this gathering. 
I'm sure they are, they are going to report on the cases that happen here. I'm sure they do happen, not just at uh, not just in society, maybe even here at the work at the workplace, they do happen. So these women and both men who report such cases. Still to come in the news, Senegalese embattled opposition leader Usman Soko hospitalized. I will be back with the details as well as sports news. Don't go away. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Every Monday to Thursday afternoon, join us for the Lunchtime Cafe. We get to bring to you emerging stories, making the headlines, media news, and we remind you of what political leaders and governance actors said back in the days in Forgotten Stories. We emphasize to you the importance of eating healthy foods and leading healthy lifestyles on the Nutrition Corner. Get the latest updates in sports and critical interviews. Because we value your contribution to national matters, we accord you an opportunity to share your perspectives during the viewers' reactions. The Camlet TV Lunchtime Cafe is an all-inclusive buffet. Camlet TV, not just another channel. Thank you so much for still staying with us. In international news, jailed Senegalese opposition leader Usman Sonko, who went on hunger strike shortly after his arrest last month, has been admitted to a hospital in Dakar, his lawyer and supporters said. His party, Panstep, said in a statement that he had been admitted for emergency care, which was confirmed by two spokesmen and Sia Kleidale, one of his lawyers, although they did not discuss his condition. In its statement, Pastev said the authorities were responsible for Sonko's condition. There has been no statement from the authorities on the matter. Sonko, 49, started his hunger strike on July 30th, two days after he was arrested. Here's a roundup of international stories. Senegal's embattled opposition leader Osman Sonko was admitted to a hospital on Monday. Sonko was on hunger strike following his arrest last month. His condition was confirmed by his past F party and the government minister of justice. Today, Usman Sonko is in the main hospital. This is true information. It's not fake. He's admitted to the main hospital because when you are in jail, if the prison administration realizes that you are not well, they take you to the hospital because they don't want you to die. That's the main aim of the game. The aim of the game is to just apply a sentence that's been handed down by the courts. So he's admitted to the main hospital. On June 1st, Sonko was sentenced in absentia to two months in prison. He and his supporters denounced the conviction as politically motivated. Osman Sonko has not constituted himself a prisoner. He is not under arrest in execution of the criminal chamber's judgment. He is being arrested and prosecuted for the charges that the public prosecutor laid down last week and which have nothing to do with the conviction before the criminal court. So contumacy is still on the table. And Article 312 of the Code of Criminal Procedure is clear. Sonko's conviction sparked clashes that left 16 dead, according to the government, 24 according to Amnesty International, and 30 according to Sonko's past F party. A batch of contaminated common cold syrup manufactured by an Indian company has been flagged by the World Health Organization, WHO, the latest in a series of warnings by the United Nations Agency about substandard medicines from the country. On Monday, the WHO said the manufacturer and the marketer 
have not provided guarantees on the safety and quality of the product. The UN agency said the batch of the syrup branded cold out found in Iraq was manufactured by Ford's India Laboratories for Dabilai Pharma and had higher than acceptable limit of contaminants. They include dietylene and ethylene glycol according to the WHO's medical product alert. The alert about cold out is the latest issued in recent months about contaminated cough syrups sold worldwide. At least five of the syrups under scrutiny involve Indian manufacturers. Cough syrups made in India were linked to deaths of at least 89 children in Gambia and Uzbekistan last year. And in sports news, Morocco have followed South Africa, Nigeria and Zambia out of the World Cup, losing a 4-0 to France in the last 16 to leave the tournament without African representation. After the Atlas Lionesses beat South Korea and Colombia to banish memories of a 6-0 opening defeat to Germany and spectacular progress to the knockout stage, France proved a bridge too far. The Lees Blues flew into a three-goal lead inside 23 minutes in Adelaide after goals from Kadidiao to Naidi, Kenze Dali and Eugene Le Soma in the space of eight minutes and never looked back. After being held to a goalless draw in their group stage opener against Jamaica, Hef Renard's players have found their shooting boots and will now face host Australia in the quarterfinal in Brisbane. For Morocco, an historic tournament comes to an end after finishing runners-up at the Women's African Cup of Nations in 2022 and reaching the knockout stage at their first ever World Cup. That sport item brings us to the end of our main news bulletin. But before I go, let's take a look at the stories making headlines. Police arrest Socialist Party leader Fred Membe. NGOCC calls for an early referendum on the Bill of Rights. Government to roll out a countrywide monitoring system on the utilization of CDF in international news. Senegalese embattled opposition leader Usman Soko hospitalized and in sports news african teams butchered out of the world cup after morocco's loss to france we now look at the cabinet vase for the day coming from the book of psalms 34 verse 4 to 5 i sought the lord and he answered me he delivered me from all my fears those who look to him are radiant their faces are never covered with shame Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sylvia Zulu. On behalf of the entire Kamne TV's news production crew, good night and stay blessed.